what's known so, so far is that methionine upregulates enzymes that are responsible for regulating the fat synthesis, and, and that being mTOR, SRBP1. And ju just so you know, the SRBP1 is, is a master regulator of lipid synthesis in all the mammal cells. And the, the process which uh, these factors are believed to influence the milk fat in cows is through the de novo fatty acid synthesis. Hi, I'm Bill Weiss, host of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Uh, my guest today is Dr. Lucas Ribello. Uh, he got his PhD from Ohio State. We, we overlapped a little bit while I was there. Uh, his work, his dissertation work was on amino acid metabolism of dairy cows. He currently works for Adiseo, providing technical support for the Eastern U.S. Lucas, uh, welcome to the Black Belt. Yeah, thanks for having me, Bill. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is the effect of methionine and probably uh, more specifically rumen, rumen uh, protected methionine on milk fat. Um, you know, right now milk fat's worth a lot of money, much more than protein. Um, why, why, why do you think an amino acid, which would relate to protein would have a, have an effect on milk fat? There's a growing body of evidence to showing that in the literature pointing to this effect, uh, Bill, uh, the amino acid exert an effect on milk fat. It is, uh, likely, um, based on this research re related to the upregulations of some of the transcription factors or enzymes associated with the de novo uh, fatty acid synthesis in milk, uh, such as the mTOR or SREBP1, um, which upregulates and promotes de novo fatty acids. So. And so th is it, this is obviously, since the studies I'm assuming are mostly with rumen protected, so this is a, a cow or a metabolic response. It's not a ruminal effect. Exactly, yeah. Adiseo, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M, the best in-class rumen-protected methionine product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, capture more value from their components, and maintain the lifetime performance of their herds. For more product information and to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids, go to MilkPay.com. How much, if if uh, at the the standard supplementation rate for RP Met, um, what kind of milk fat ex responses should should people expect, or can they get? I went back to the literature to to understand since when these results have been um, uh, showing in research, and I went back to earlier studies with the infusion of uh, amino acid directly into the intestines. And, and then I, I looked at the, all the um, rumen protected methionine research, those especially with smart amine product. And um, I did find uh, an agreement between those responses, between infusion and between supplementation with rumen protected methionine. And the average response landed around 0.1% unit in milk fat, improvement in milk fat. So um, in the overall, average supply of metabolized methionine across all of these is generally varying between eight, nine, 10, or 11 grams of metabolized methionine supply through the this supplementation or infusion. So these are pretty typical feeding rates then, or that's the, the amount needed of typical feeding rates would provide that then. Exactly, yeah. The mode of action you, you addressed a little bit, but can you go in a little more on layman's term, um, the mode of action of this stuff? Or the, I guess, is it a proposed mode of action still, or do you are we pretty confident in the mode of action? Well, there has been a couple of studies on this topic already. Uh, I think it's, uh, we can more confidently say it's, it's more than just a proposed mode of action because it's been demonstrated in cell cultures um, in more than one study. So, yeah, what, what's known so, so far is that methionine upregulates enzymes that are responsible for regulating the fat synthesis, and, and that being mTOR, SRBP1. And 
just so you know, the SRBP one is, is a master regulator of lipid synthesis in all the mammal cells. And the, the process which uh, these factors are believed to influence the milk fat in cows is through the de novo fatty acid synthesis. So I'm assuming most of their research is with Holsteins. Do you, do, is there any reason to think this wouldn't occur with jerseys or, or crossbreds? Yeah, it, it's difficult to say because there are very few studies testing amino acid supplementation in jerseys or, or crossbred. There, the only three studies I found with jerseys dates back to 1994, 1997. And the overall results are inconclusive. Um, but two things I can say are, um, the first, the responses I see in hosting trials seems to be stemming from fulfilling the methionine requirement gap. And so if you have jerseys deficient in methionine and you supplement them to fulfill the deficiency gap as well. So uh, one could expect that they would benefit from it as well. Okay. And the other, yeah, the other thing too is that jerseys, um, they tend to have a relatively higher concentration of de novo fatty acids compared to whole things. And, and that the effect of amino acids like methionine exerts and milk fat synthesis uh, seems to be uh, mostly stemming from that de novo pathway. But, okay. but, but again, we're, uh, but we are still in the pro learning process of that and in the differences across breeds. And this is, this may be an uh, unknown answer as well, but have you looked at interact dietary interactions with methionine say you know for certain fat supplements will increase milk fat is it is is there research looking at effects or interactions between these these ingredients there has been some publications on the topic um that testing these interactions but i would say it's certainly not enough mm -hmm. to my knowledge there's a study from cornell that showed that feeding uh, omega-3 fatty acid plus rumen protected methionine resulted in an, an additive effect on the de novo fat, fatty acid yield. Um, there are some other studies from Michigan testing that effect between palm fat and methionine, but there was no interactions found. There's a study from Sebastian that tested ketogenic and glucogenic diets, but uh, small interactions found mostly on the reduction in mercury and nitrogen, urinary excretion of nitrogen when you supply glucogenic diet plus amino acids. Uh, but yeah, we certainly need to learn more about how all of this works, especially when it comes to fatty acids and how their functional properties interact with the functional properties of amino acids. I guess just to, to wrap up, is there research with other amino acids on effects on milk fat, not milk protein, but milk fat? Is there other research or other potential candidates here? Yes, yes. So these cell cultures publications on the topic have been alluding to other amino acids as well, besides methionine, such as isoleucine, leucine, and interestingly, lysine as well. Um, and one of the publications I suggest reading is published uh, in the ADSA abstract from Isabella Teixeira's lab from the University of Dyer, Idaho. So, which, which covers that topic. Yes, uh, different from what I learned, but amino acids are more than just building blocks of proteins. But th this has been interesting. Th thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Bill.